Hi, this is Dan Templeton with the Solaris High Performance Computing Team. I would like to show you an interesting demo that I've put together using the new Sun HPC software Solaris Developer Edition, the Sun Grid Engine 6.2 Service Domain Manager, and the Amazon EC2 Cloud. Before we get to the demo, let's talk a little bit about what the Sun HPC software Solaris Developer Edition is. It is a virtual machine image available for VMware or VirtualBox that has the Solaris operating environment pre-installed along with a suite of Sun's HPC tools. These tools have been integrated together so that you as a developer can sit down and go round trip from developing your application through debugging it all the way to deploying it all within this one virtual machine which includes by the way a virtual cluster for testing. What you're looking at now is actually that Sun HPC software, Solaris Developer Edition virtual machine, running in VMware on my Mac OS laptop. Let's go ahead and start up Studio by double-clicking on the Studio icon conveniently provided right here on the desktop. Now that Studio has come up, you can see a couple of things. First of all, here are a list of projects that are open for you by default. Now these are example projects of how to do things with some of those HPC tools I talked about before, such as Grid Engine or MPI. And over here you can see we have a tab that takes you to a view of jobs that can be run in Grid Engine and a list of the jobs that have already been run. Now if we go over here and right click on this Grid Engine project, we'll get a pop-up menu and from that pop-up menu, there is a grid engine option, and from that sub-menu, we could actually launch this project as a job. But we're not going to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is define a new job. So the name of our job is going to be HPC job, and we're going to use a script that is predefined in the user's home directory called hpcjob.sh. Now this script is actually a, a script that will kick off several more jobs of its own. So in total, this script will kick off eight more jobs by itself. So what I'm going to do is select this job, and I'm going to press the play button. Then I can confirm the dialog that pops up, and now my job has been submitted to Grid Engine. So if I flip over here to my graphical representation of the system, you can see I've got a load meter down here in the lower left corner that is indicating the number of pending jobs in the system. I also have a cluster of machines, and on each machine is a little indicator that shows whether a job is running there or not. Now in the middle is the service domain manager, which is represented as a power plug because it is the power outlet for your cluster. Now you can see what's happened while I've been talking is the service domain manager has recognized that the load on Grid Engine was too high. So it took machines out of this spare pool of lab machines and moved them over into Sun Grid Engine. Now this is actually happening. Now if I go back over here to uh, Studio and submit another set of jobs so I make sure things get uh, good and loaded, we'll see what happens next. So at this point, my spare pool is exhausted. I have no more machines that I can contribute. And now you can see that that uh, job kicked off its, its eight sub jobs and I've got a high load on my system. Well, spare pool is empty. What do I do? Service Domain Manager is going to go out to the Amazon EC2 cloud and automatically provision a machine to bring it into the cluster. And you can see as soon as the machine comes in, it receives a job to execute. Now because the load is still high, we're going to bring in a second machine from the cloud to attempt to resolve the, this high load. Now you can see that the jobs are slowly being executed by these machines. 
each time one of those little indicators drops and goes back up, that's a job finishing and a new one being scheduled. And you can see every time that happens, the load meter goes down a little. And as the load meter drops, the need for resources drops, and so you won't see any more resources being added to this cluster from the Amazon EC2 cloud. Now, you can see we've reached zero load at this point. There's no more pending jobs. So what's going to happen is the service domain manager will take the resources that are now idle and give them back to where they came from. We don't want the Amazon EC2 hosts hanging around forever. We don't really want to hold on to the spare pool hosts either. We want to give them back when we're done using them. And so you can see that's what's happening. Now you can see after this spare pool host is released, we're back to where we started. And that completes this demo. Thank you for watching.